This harmonograph has technology from the 1990s to make it easy to use and reconfigure to make different types of drawings. It has two pairs of two pendulums configured to independently move the paper and the pen horizontally and vertically and parallel to the wall. The period of the pendulum that moves the paper horizontally is fixed at about 3.5 seconds. The periods of the other three pendulums are adjustable from about 3 seconds to about 12 seconds. The 90s were the golden age of technical solutions looking for problems. Techies were looking for anything that could be made better by adding a microprocessor, buttons, and a display. This obviously applied to harmonographs as well, so how could a microprocessor make a harmonograph better? From my previous experiences building and using harmonographs, tuning multiple pendulums to have mutually rational periods was a tedious and often frustrating chore. Without accurate tuning, the drawings look like scribbling. And if the harmonograph could be configured for multiple different ratios, it was cumbersome to return to a previously tuned state since heavy weights needed to be moved to precise positions. A minor problem was holding the moving pen away from the paper while the pendulums were started swinging, and then smoothly setting the moving pen on the paper to start the drawing. I always felt like a third hand would be useful. Any 1990s techie could design a workable solution for these problems using easily available components and cobbling it together on a workbench. However, it took a serious techie to put it all in a nice box with printed button labels and hide the wires, or at least make them look neat. The primary components included a programmable microprocessor, A to D converter, various small scale ICs, accelerometers, 10 turn linear potentiometers, model airplane servos, and a 32-character LCD. Eight push-button switches were used for the control input. The switch on the right controlled a small servo coupled to the pen arm. Press to lower the pen, press again to raise the pen. The tall boxes at the ends of each adjustable pendulum enclosed about 50 pounds of weight that could be moved up or down by a heavy-duty servo driving a quarter-inch by 20 threaded rod. A 10-turn linear potentiometer was coupled through a gear train to the threaded rod so the position of the weight was converted to a voltage. The A to D converter could then resolve the weight's position within about a tenth of an inch. An accelerometer IC was mounted on each of the four pendulums and connected to the A to D. The program in the microprocessor processed the accelerometer data to determine the pendulum's periods and ratios. The interface had four modes, each selected sequentially by pressing the mode button. The modes were select, move weights, manual adjust, and data. There were two buttons for each of the three adjustable pendulums. Pressing the slower button made the period longer. Pressing the faster button made the period shorter. In select mode, these pendulum buttons specified the ratio of the target period to the fixed period. Pressing the slower button sequenced through 1 to 1, 2 to 2, 3 to 2, and 3 to 1. Pressing the faster button sequenced through 3 to 1, 3 to 2, 2 to 2, and 1 to 1. The move weights mode automatically moved the weights to their programmed locations. Pressing any pendulum button started the automatic process for that pendulum. The bottom row of the display showed the current distance above or below the target position. In the manual adjust mode, the pendulum buttons directly controlled the corresponding servo and its direction. If the pendulums were swinging, the bottom row displayed the percentage difference between the target period and the measured period. In the data mode, various internal data values were displayed. This techie harmonograph was intended for display in the living space, so it was made from furniture quality white oak and black walnut. It was deliberately designed to look heavy-duty and chunky to complement its techy theme. This also made the woodworking relatively simple. It was wall-mounted and extended about a foot into the room. It was about six feet wide, so needed about eight feet of wall space to operate and not look crowded. It weighed about 250 pounds, so needed to be securely fastened to a wall stud. Lag bolts were used to fasten a mounting block to the stud. The central structure slid over this block to hide the block and the bolts. The two pivots for the vertical pendulums are three inch long steel knife edges, mating with V-shaped grooves in brass. The two horizontal pendulums moved on pivots at the end of the vertical pendulums. These pivots are two inch long steel knife edges 
mating with V-shaped grooves in brass pieces mounted on the end of the pendulum bars. Horizontal paper pendulum has a weight box at each end. The weights were distributed so that the period was about three and a half seconds. The top box is also the paper table. Two brass spheres on movable wire arms hold paper in place. A holder for extra paper and pens was built into the central structure. The paper holder fits standard 8.5 by 11 inch paper, but the harmonograph can easily make 12 by 12 inch drawings. I should have made the paper holder bigger. I have demonstrated this harmonograph to dozens of people, and most of them made several of their own drawings. It was not especially difficult to build, but took a lot of time, about 200 hours. I have had to repair the electronics a couple of times, and currently one of the servos is not working. This is a downside of adding technology to simple, reliable, gravity-powered machine. But techies gotta do what techies do.